In this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use multiple instances of the ultra key green screen effect on the same clip. We can mask out different parts of the ultra key so we can use it to key out different colors of the green that might be difficult to key out with just one instance of ultra key. For example, if I bring over my green screen footage, down at the bottom here, I have a piece of green screen fabric that is slightly different color than the green screen on the wall. So what I can do is go to my effects controls by clicking on those two little arrows. And then in the search bar, I can type in ultra. I'll drag on an instance of ultra key. And now there are two places you can make masks in Premiere. One is on the opacity tab with the pen tool. This affects the whole clip. I'm going to use that as well. But first I'm going to use the ultra key pen tool right here, and I'm going to mask out this bottom piece of fabric. So I'll select the pen tool. Sometimes it helps to zoom out just a little bit, so I'll do that. Then with the pen tool, I can select outside the image. Then I'll come up to where that fabric is, and I'll select out a mask. Now the Alter key is only affecting this area. Next, I'll go ahead and select the color of the Alter key by selecting the eyedropper under key color. Then I want to hold Control or Command to get a larger eyedropper. This is kind of dark, so I'm gonna go ahead and select a darker color in the middle here. And that does a pretty good job of keying out that fabric. Now I'll slide forward until I see my subject. And what I wanna do is go ahead and switch from composite to alpha channel. I wanna be able to see which parts are being keyed out. I'll also zoom in a little bit. And so what I want is all this background to be black and the feet to be perfectly white. So there's a few controls we can use in Ultra Key to fix this mat. First, under Mat Generation, we can raise the pedestal. This will take care of some of the noise in the background. As you can see, these spots start to disappear as I raise the pedestal. If you go too far, it'll eat into the actual character. But remember, we're just trying to key out this section with the feet. So you can go pretty high because the feet are pretty dark. Then you can raise or lower the shadows. If I raise the shadows, it will bring the dark areas back. If I lower them, it'll cut them out. But if I lower it too far, you see it cuts into the feet. So it may be better to lower the highlights a little bit because we have this bright area, if you remember, before I keyed. So I want to drag those highlights down. And then I can raise the contrast of the mat in matte cleanup. So if I raise that contrast, you can see it's starting to remove these areas in the background. And then I can go ahead, I can lower the shadows just a little bit, and then I can change the midpoint of the mat up a little bit. And we're getting closer. Raise the pedestal a bit more. I increase the tolerance of the color, and now I have everything except for this spot right here, which I could easily mask out, and it's very far from the character. I'm going to lower the transparency until the background starts to come in. So right about there is when the background comes in. So now if I scrub through, I have a really good key for the feet. There's a couple places that could be cleaned up, and you can keyframe these parameters to clean up those areas. Now what I need to do is duplicate the ultra key. So in the effects panel, I can twirl it up by selecting this arrow then I can copy, and then I can paste. So now I have two ultra keys. You can even rename them so you don't get confused. I'll call this ground key, and then I can rename this one wall key. Now I know which one is which. What I want to do is reset wall key. So it's completely reset. Have to rename it after that. And then when I twirl down wall key, I want to delete the mask. So click on the mask and delete it. Then I can go ahead and select the eyedropper and then hold command or control and select the background. Now I'm keying out the background. I can go ahead and put the feet back to composite under ground key. So from alpha channel to composite. Then I'll twirl up ground key so I'm not working on it. Then I'm going to zoom out to fit. And once again, I'll go to alpha channel. I want to make the background be completely black. So first I'll raise up the pedestal to get rid of that noise in the background. And this is gonna do a great job. It almost does everything. Then I can make sure that I check the shadows. If I lower the shadows, that's gonna be good, but it starts to eat into the character. 
If I lower the highlights, it gets rid of those hot spots. And then I can go ahead and raise the contrast a bit. And it's getting rid of most of everything else. I can adjust the midpoint of the mask. And now I just have this little bit right there. And I think that I can fix the mask path of the ground key to get rid of that. Now that I adjusted the ground key mask, I have a really good key. As you can see here, I have everything keyed out pretty well on my subject. I think right here I have a little bit of gray. So I'll just decrease the transparency just a little bit. Great, so now that makes that more solid. I'll scrub through. This is looking like a good key. Now, once I have this key, I can go up to the opacity mask. Remember, don't confuse the opacity mask with the alter key mask. The opacity mask affects the whole clip. I'll zoom out to 25%. I'll get the pen control and I'll key out a mask and get rid of that trouble spot right there. Now, if I look, I basically have a perfect key of my character, even though I have two different colors of green screen. So hopefully you can use the mask controls on the Ultra Key to be able to stack different instances of Ultra Key in Premiere Pro so you have quick and easy green screen keying of your characters. Happy video compositing.